Good afternoon guys, this is M. Shanae for Hi-Fi and the Low Light, and I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to feature a headphone. I know you guys have been watching my reviews and you've seen me talk about a variety of digital audio players, a variety of DACs, a variety of amps, and I do impressions with headphones, but it's been some time since I've featured a headphone. Just a headphone. And I'm excited, I've actually got Mastrop's collaboration headphone the hi Feynman HE4XX. If you guys are not familiar, Mastrop has been launching an amazing range of successful collaboration headphones. They've done one with Sennheiser, the HD6XS. They've done one with AKG, the 7XS. They did one with hi Feynman, the HE3XX, and now they've translated over into doing a planer with them. Mastrop logo. What makes Mastrop unique and what makes their, their drops, their headphones so special is they put a lot of time and energy into crafting what is a phenomenal sounding headphone. Some of the best headphones that you can purchase with cash. The reason being is the release is a limited run and it is priced super aggressively. So I'm excited, I'm really excited to be able to talk about the HE4XX. The drop was a few months ago, they're gonna start shipping here in December. So you should start to see people popping up, people echoing some of the positive sentiment that has always been around and always been associated with Mastrop's headphones. What we're gonna talk about today is the build quality, the function, how it works with a portable amplifier, how it works with a digital audio player, how it works with the DAC amp that is sourced to your phone. And of course, we're gonna talk about how it pairs with different DACs, different amps, as well as how it compares to some of my other headphones. Let's talk about the build. Mastrop and Hi Feynman did an excellent job with crafting this headphone. Hi Feynman has recently switched over to a new connector which I appreciate. Additionally, an improvement from my HE4, which is a legacy high Feynman, is the headband. It's a bit more plush, there seems to be more cushioning, and I found it to be comfortable. Additionally, these little gimbals, on my HE4, they wore off over time. These are set. Really, the whole headphone is well built. The plastic cups are heavy, they've got a nice shine, they've got a nice feel. The metal gimbals have a good firmness, there is some flexibility. This is a build that really inspires confidence and I'm happy to see this level of build quality from Hi Feynman. When I first got the HEX from them, it wasn't impressive. I've put my hands on a couple 400 eyes and they've not been impressive. What I really like is the cable. Cable snaps in, snaps in nice. Cable's got a good weight. It comes with a right angle plug standard. They really sought this one through and they built an excellent product for $170. That wraps it up from build. Let's talk quickly about the function. Function is how well it pairs operationally with a variety of different devices. A dedicated portable amplifier, I feel is the best way to take this headphone with you on the go. It doesn't need an amplifier, but it does better with an amplifier. When I paired it with my HM601, I was able to get to a listenable level. For me, listenable is right around peaks of 88 decibels. And that's with music that has a dynamic range of about 10. So upwards of 88, as low as 78. What happens though is when I use my HM601 or my Shandling M2S, I can get loud enough. I can get to that, that point, that 88 decibel peak but I don't have any headroom because I am pushing these devices all the way to the max. So if I get music that is quieter, if I get music that has a dynamic range of maybe 14 or 15 or 16, and I'm gonna maybe get peaks of 91, 92, and then dips as low as 78, I'm not able to get, I'm not able to get the dynamic range. I'm lacking headroom and it's not, it's not bad, but it's not ideal. So if you're going to be using the HE4XX portable, you're going to want a portable amplifier to get the best out of it. If you're at home and you're using the HE4XX, chances are the amplifier that you're using is going to do more than enough. 
Um, this is not a headphone you want to use with your cell phone. It'll get loud enough, but again, you have no dynamic range and you're going to be limited in what you can comfortably listen to. Let's talk about how it sounds. That's the most important thing that's what we're all wondering about. The sound signature for the HE4XX is full bodied, it is beautiful. It has a thick, a meaty low end. The mid range has touch of tactility. The highs are smooth. They're neither glossed over nor emphasized. It's really very, very, it's very pleasant. It's very relaxed. It has that low end power that we expect from planers. Breaking it down a little bit further, the drums have a good bit of kick. They've got a lot of impact. The low bass is present, though it's a little bit loose, but ultimately it's a, a fun, it's a funner low end. There's a thickness, there's a meaty, there's just a touch of emphasis down there to make things enjoyable with both electronic dance music, classical, house music, rock and roll, orchestral music, just a little bit of extra bottom end energy that I enjoy. Moving on, the mid-range, again, it is warm. It is full body, it is from the body. I like it. It's really, it's quite warm. There's some tactility. There's a bit of emphasis more on the decay than there is on the attack. So the resolve for strings, the resolve for, you know, piano, some of those transients are not as obvious. On the flip side, there's amazing resolve with vocals. That touch of emphasis in the decay, just adds a sense of beauty. The, the quiver in a violin you know, as the string is resting, the vibrato in a singer's voice. These are very beautiful things that we don't often notice. Not quite romantic, but just a really beautiful, relaxed, full-bodied sound. The top end is, it's sufficient. There's nothing that's lacking, there's nothing to praise. It does well, it does very well. The resolve, there's a touch of emphasis again on the decay over the attack. And I found the HE4XX resolve vocals the best. If you like listening to a lot of vocal heavy tracks, a lot of acapella music was phenomenal with the HE4XX. The dynamics, again, they were sufficient. There was nothing to complain about, there was nothing to praise. You know, MassRap has done an excellent job in tuning this headphone to be good. There are no there are no negatives. There's nothing it does badly. There are things that it does very well, and there are things that it does well. Sins of omission are the best to have. Finally, the imaging. There's a touch of excitement when you need it. It is a little bit more intimate, but again, it shifts. If you need some intimacy, it becomes intimate. If you need a little bit more spacious, it does open up. There's a good bit of width, but the depth is lacking a little bit. Again, the sound signature for this is a very refined you know, version of a warmer sound. There's fullness, there's a fullness in the mid-range. There is resolve in the decay. There's not too much emphasis that things sound muddy. Again, it's very balanced, very tonally pleasing. Really a beautiful headphone to listen to. Next, we're gonna talk about pairings. How it pairs with the JDS Labs, the LDAC. How it pairs with my hi fi Men 901. How it pairs with the Geek Out V2 Plus. I'm gonna go over how it pairs with the Shandling M2S, my Hi Feynman HM601, and finally how it paired with my Project Ember. Let's go into the pairings. My favorite pairing by far, what gave me the most pleasure, what I loved the most, it's, I'm guilty to say it, but it really was the Shandling M2S. I mentioned before, I had to push, the, I actually used the line out. I used the line out feature to drive the HE4XX. What I loved about that pairing is it was amazing. It was amazing. All of what I love about the HE4XX is intact. The M2S didn't add anything, it didn't take anything. They paired together beautifully and it was simple. The M2S is 150. Bring my HE4XX, it handles about 90% of my library. There are some tracks that I would like a little bit louder but otherwise, for the most part, it's great. What I use my M2S for is if I'm at class or I'm on campus, and I spend a lot of time listening to classical guitar music. Sometimes I'll do rock. I pair it with a lot of different things. It's simple, straightforward. I loved it. Moving on to the HM601. This was too much of a good thing. I lovingly want to refer to the Master Up AT4XX as 
the Hi-Fiman HM601 in headphone form because the two share a similar sound. What the 601 brought was a sense of depth, an amazing sense of resolve. It resolved more detail than the M2S did and I was impressed but it kind of softened the sound a little bit. It wasn't as tactile as what I liked. And again, there was absolutely no headroom. On top of the fact that sometimes it was a little bit too thick, it was a little bit too much, but they were beautiful. They were really beautiful together. There are just some tracks that are magic. And then there are some tracks that are not because it's the same sound signature compounded. So it's not always a good thing. The Pico Power was a good pairing with this. Having an amplifier opens up and gets you a little bit more soundstage. What I paired it with first, I did the Pico Power with my NFB10 ES2, and then I also did it with my Hi Feynman HM901. The HE4XX, it scales. It doesn't scale astonishingly, but it scales. So there were improvements. There was a bit more, more resolve better transients, a little bit more attack, it opened up on the top end. Everything was a little bit better, especially coming from the M2S. I also tried it with my Geek Out V2 Plus, which I used with my phone. And again, it was very much a lot like the M2S. There was a small increase. You know, the M2S is 99% of what the Geek Out V2 is. So what that means is if you've got a Geek Out V2, or you've got, you know, $400, $500, what we consider a mid-range performing portable DAC amp. Three seconds. The Geek Air V2 resolved about three seconds more detail. If I listen to a five minute song, three seconds of that song combined from start to finish were better on the Geek Air V2. So that's a little bit more transient. A, an echo maybe is back a little bit for just a little bit of information. Again, not a huge difference. Moving to the vintage of the 901 and the Pico Power, I gain like an extra second. You know, I go from having three seconds worth of extra stuff to four seconds and sometimes five. So what I love about the HE4XX is while it scales, it is not a, it's a marginal improvement. So it's one of the headphones that you're not gonna feel like you're lacking something because you don't have a $1,000 digital audio player and a $500 amp to pair it with. You know, it's a bit of overkill and I like that. What is though, what is nice is if you bring it into a desktop system, you get that extra second. Now we get up into six seconds. The Ember 2 with the NFB10 ES2 paired beautifully with the HE4XX. A lot of what I wanted, a little bit more attack, a little bit more sparkle on the top end, the amp was able to bring. So again, I like how well the HE4XX pairs with a variety of different devices. Cell phones aren't gonna do well, but portable digital audio players, entry level stuff will do well. And it's a product that is just, it's very good with everything. It doesn't punish you for listening from poor sources and the incentive you gain from spending thousands of dollars to amp it and source it isn't a dramatic difference. It just sounds good. You buy the basics and it just sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining me thus far. And if you haven't caught on, the word of the day is beautiful. I think I've said it like six or seven times. Why do I keep repeating this word? The simplicity of the 4XX is what makes it beautiful. It sounds good with a lot of different products. It is very favorable. It has just the right amount of resolve and just the right amount of scale. It is a beautiful product to own because you don't need a lot or really much of anything else to get with it. Just buy it, plug it into something. If it doesn't get loud enough, buy an amp and you will enjoy yourself. Now, what if you do? What if you do have the 4XX and maybe you've gotten yours in December, now it's February, March, April, and you think, I do want a little bit more. I want to upgrade to something. I do briefly want to give a shout out to the JDS Labs LDAC. Nice little black box nestled underneath the headphones we're going to compare it to. I paired the, the LDAC with a Generation 1 Ship Valley. The combination cost me $350, and it was right dead in the middle. The next big jump that you can take with the HE4XX is in the $1,000 price range, and that's a waste. Let's talk about how the 4XX compares to other headphones. We're going to start with the HE4. It doesn't do as well. The 4 is 
a different sound signature, but it is a step up. It is more open, it is faster, it is more tactile, it resolves better, it images better, the bass is linear, there's no humpiness. It's one of my favorites, it is phenomenal. What is the problem with the HE4 though? Well, number one, it's not made anymore, and number two, you need a powerful amplifier for it. So yes, it's better, but it's not as cost effective. It's not a smart purchase. It is definitely, you need to customize and you need to build a system around maximizing the HE4. So, you know, the HE4XX is simpler to own, more enjoyable to own. Yeah, you can go to the HE4 and get some improvements, but there's a lot of headache with that. So how does the HE4XX compare with the Superlux? This is a $40 headphone. It's better, really, it's better. I've had my Superlux HD 668B for about a year. For 40 bucks, it's impressive. I can plug it into anything and it sounds about the same. Uh, it scales kinda, but not really. The 4XX is, is a good step up. Both of them have a nice totter low end. The Superlux is a bit more sterile. So if you've got the Superlux now, which some of you probably do, and you're wondering if you want to spend the extra 130 to go to the HE4XX, I would say yes. You get a more cohesive sound, a warmer, more natural sound. Now, we've talked about warmth, we've talked about beauty, we've talked about a lot of qualities that I associate with Grado headphones. So how does the HE4XX compare with a Grado? Well, this is my Nahord Red version one. This is a custom Grado style driver in the Grado style enclosure. It's not so much preference, but the, the Nahord was a step up. It resolved a little bit better. It was a little bit cleaner in the base. It had a little bit more energy up top. It was a better headphone. Now the problem with the Nahord, number one, every custom build is different. I paid 275 for mine. So I paid $100 more. The other problem with the Nahor or with a Grado is you need to pair it. You need to pair it specifically to equipment that is going to work well with it. The HE4XX isn't so picky with pairing. It sounds amazing with a lot of equipment. If you decide to jump and go into a Grado, you want to go into something that is in that style, then now you're going to need, going back to the JDS Lab, the LDAC, and the Valley One. That's a good combo for a Grado headphone. That is an excellent combo for a Grado headphone. So again, the HE4 was a step up, a departure to a different sound, a better headphone altogether, but a bigger headache. The Superlux was a step down. If you've got the Superlux, upgrade to the 4XX and enjoy yourself. If you're considering going the Grado route, you're gonna find some things are better in the Grado path, but you're gonna have to work harder to get there. All in all, guys, the HE4XX, the mass drop combination with Hi Feynman, is a phenomenal product. In the same way you heard me talk about how much I love the M2S for how simple it is to own and operate, the HE4XX embodies that same. It is simply beautiful. It's beautiful to listen to. The ownership is so simple. Guys, I appreciate your time. I know I've rambled a little bit longer in this video. You've got to see my crazy facial expressions and my hand gestures. But the bottom line is if you didn't get the Masteroff HE4XX, next time it comes around, pick it up. Guys, I appreciate you watching today. I hope that you have a good day, a good night, a good morning, whatever time it is for you. Remember to like and subscribe and leave your questions in the comment section.